I spent 12 days and visited 8 places to do this camera comparison, so it's really in-depth. Happy New Year everyone and welcome to my camera comparison between the 6 Pro and the 13 Pro Max. The comparison includes 11 different categories to show you how each camera processes the day and night photos and videos. In parallel, I was running a blind camera comparison campaign on YouTube to collect your votes on some of the photos and I'm gonna share the results in this video which is interesting. So without further ado, let's jump in. I will start with the morning camera comparison and the first category is the landscape shots. After taking a huge amount of photos, I started to see the trends of each camera, so let me summarize them for you. First, the colors. 100% of the time, the 13 Pro Max produces more saturated colors compared to the 6 Pro. So this is the first example, here's the second and the third. I do have even more, but I'm sure you got the idea. Another noticeable difference between the two is in the exposure. The 6 Pro will always produce brighter shadows, in contrast, the 13 Pro Max tunes down the shadows to give more contrast and that makes the shot look more dramatic. Let me show you a couple more examples. Here's number one and number two. The third difference is in the level of detail. As you would expect, the 6 Pro produces more detailed images due to the higher megapixel count. In this example, the 13 Pro Max lacks a lot of details that you can clearly see in the pixels image. The fourth difference is in the field of view. The wide angle lens of the 6 Pro is slightly wider and as per the spec sheet it's equivalent to a 25mm lens versus 26 for the 13 Pro Max. Beside all the differences I found both to have a very close wide balance most of the time. And this photo is a perfect example of this. To sum up the iPhone will always produce more saturated colors, the 6 Pro has brighter shadows and less contrast compared to the iPhone, the 13 Pro Max's images are less detailed with more noise and the wide angle of the 6 Pro has a wider field of view. But what about the ultra wide lenses? When it comes to the image processing, they are exactly the same as their wide angle counterparts. You will see the same differences in colors, exposure, and contrast. Even the level of detail coming out of the pixels ultra wide is still better than the 13 Pro Max. The only difference is the iPhone's ultra wide is noticeably wider at 120 degrees versus only 114 for the pixel. Now let's take a look at your votes. This is the photo I chose for the blind camera comparison because it perfectly represents the characteristics of each camera. I received 248 comments at the time of collecting the results, 213 out of which were valid. The 6 Pro got 195 votes versus only 18 for the 13 Pro Max, which is a huge gap. Based on what you have said in the comments, most of you preferred the brighter shadows and the better details coming out of the 6 Pro, while the iPhone was picked mainly for its more contrast. Now let's talk about the night landscape photos. They share most of the things we have seen in morning shots like the brighter shadows of the 6 Pro, the more saturated colors of the 13 Pro Max, and the higher level of detail coming out of the pixel. This shot was taken with the night mode turned off on both phones, but look what happened when I activated the automatic night mode. The 13 Pro Max blown out every single light in the scene, so you could barely see what's written on this wall. All the signs are blown out, plus the software sharpening was too aggressive, so the whole image looks like a mess. While the 6 Pro did handle the situation much better in every aspect. And once more, the ultra wide lenses exactly match their wide angle counterparts. Before ending this, I have to give the credit to the 13 Pro Max in two things. First, it has the more realistic look of the scene, and that happens all the time. Secondly, if you take a look at the top area, you will see the 6 Pro had some red lens flares, while the 13 Pro Max's image didn't encounter this issue. Now let me show you a quick slideshow for more night shots before sharing your votes. Now let's take a look at your votes on the night landscape shot. And here's the image of a choice. I got 84 comments and all of them were valid. The 6 Pro got 60 votes versus 24 for the 13 Pro Max. People picked the 6 Pro for the brighter shadows and the more details, while the 13 Pro Max was picked for its more contrast. And that matches exactly what happened with the morning landscape shots. But keep in mind, even if you like one over the other, both offer different ways to adjust the camera to your taste. For instance, the 6 Pro has the wide balance and dual exposure sliders. Similarly, the 13 Pro Max has the new photographic styles feature that you can use to adjust the camera contrast and wide balance as well. 
The only thing that I wish the 6 Pro had is the ability to save my settings for later use like the iPhone does. And now it's time for today's sponsor. Ever deleted an important message, file, or picture from your phone by accident? I have, and it's devastating. But thanks to Dr. Phone, this will be a thing of the past. With their all-in-one phone suite, you can now retrieve most lost files in very few and easy steps. Just go to their website, download the Wondershare app, and from there, access the file recovery tool. Connect your iPhone to the PC, wait for scanning process, Select what you want to recover, select deleted files indicated by the delete icon, restore to device or to the computer. And within a few minutes you'll be reunited with your precious lost files once more. And it doesn't just stop there. You can also back up and restore WhatsApp chats from an iPhone to an Android device or vice versa. Unlock your device, even if you have forgotten the passcode, and much more. Dr. Phone just makes your tech life easy, so do check the link in the description below to download their software for either your PC, Mac, or phone. Thank you, Dr. Phone, for sponsoring this video. Now let's move on to the HDR category. The entire comparison took place in Dubai Creek Harbor, which is an amazing spot for capturing sunset photos. And here's the first shot. The 13 Pro Max did handle the sun better compared to the Pixel, but the 6 Pro has brighter shadows as expected. Finally, when you look at the sky, you will see the Pixel image has a pink hue, while the 13 Pro Max kept the natural look of the scene. Moving to the ultra wide, both images look exactly the same as the wide angle shots, so nothing is different here. Let's move on to the second image to show you one more difference between the two. Sometimes the 6 Pro shows red lens flares on the side when the light source is too bright, like it did in the night shots, while the 13 Pro Max didn't encounter the same issue throughout the whole comparison. Moving to the ultra wide version of the same shot and this time the 6 Pro didn't show any lens flares like it did with the wide angle lens. To sum up the 13 Pro Max can better handle the sun with more realistic colors and contrast, while the 6 Pro provides more details in the shadows, less accurate colors, and red lens flares in some situations. However, when I compared both using the telephoto lens, the iPhone image came out too dark to a point that I could barely see anything in the scene. So that gives the edge to the 6 Pro when it comes to the telephoto lens. And now let me show you a quick slideshow for more sunset photos before sharing your votes on the blind HDR comparison. So here's the shot I chose for the blind HDR comparison. I received 179 comments, 168 were valid votes, and the results are 87 votes for the 6 Pro versus 81 for the 13 Pro Max. The 6 Pro was mainly picked for the brighter shadows once more, and the red lens flares showed in the shot wasn't an issue for most of you, while the 13 Pro Max was picked for better handling the sun and producing a more realistic look. Now let's move on to the portraits. Right off the bat both have different zoom levels, the 6 Pro has 1x and 2x, while the 13 Pro Max has 1x and 3x. The second difference is the Pixel doesn't use the telephoto lens for portraits while the iPhone does. So let's take a look at the first 1x portrait from the same distance. As you see the 6 Pro image is cropped even though the camera is set to 1x, based on my testing 1x in portrait mode is equivalent to 1.5x in the main camera. On the other hand, the iPhone takes an actual 1x photo. Leaving that aside, let's take a look at the differences in the image processing. Keep in mind the face retouching is not activated on the Pixel, and the iPhone doesn't have a beauty mode. But when you look at both, you will see the iPhone did smooth out my skin, and adjusted the tone in a way that makes it look unnatural. And that's always the case with all iPhones, not only the 13 Pro Max, while the Pixel shows much more details and my natural skin tone. Another thing I noticed in some of the 13 Pro Max's portraits, my face looks blurry even though I didn't move and the phone was attached to a tripod. In comparison, the 6 Pro image looks much sharper. Let me show you another 1x portrait, but this time I stepped away from the camera while taking the 6 Pro shot to match the 13 Pro Max, which will make it easier to compare. The first difference I see is in the t-shirt color. The 6 Pro shows the real color, which is black, while it looks like dark blue in the 13 Pro Max's image, so far the Pixel is better in handling skin tones, colors, and details. Now let's talk about the differences in the blur effect and subject isolation. The 13 Pro Max has a reasonable amount of blurness and it looks more natural overall, 
while the level of blurness coming out of the 6 Pro is a bit too much which makes it look unrealistic. I checked the level of blurness of this photo in Google Photos and I found it to be 100% which is unreasonably high. After tuning it down to 50% it looked much better. So I hope Google will consider this in the future. Also the 13 Pro Max has better subject isolation most of the time and you can clearly see this around my hair, ears and shoulders. And here's another shot that shows how bad the 6 Pro subject isolation could be. Both blurred the left side of my head but the 6 Pro is much worse. Now let's move on to the zoomed portraits. I still see the same differences in the image processing as we saw in the previous image but the 6 Pro did over sharpen the image a bit too much because it's a digital crop and the overall quality is very low. And because of this I did another comparison but this time I activated face retouching on the 6 Pro to see if this will minimize the over sharpening that takes place at 2x. Here's the first trial with the face retouching set to subtle which is the lowest setting possible. That definitely looks better than the previous image. First, the software sharpening is noticeably less without sacrificing my natural skin tone. Comparing this to the 13 Pro Max, still the 6 Pro has the more natural look of my skin, even with the face retouching activated. So let's take it a step further and set the face retouching on the pixel to the highest level which is smooth. Even with the highest level the 6 Pro still preserve my natural skin tone while the 13 Pro Max never did. But what I like about the 13 Pro Max it uses the telephoto lens to take the 3x portraits and that's why the iPhone's image looks cleaner with less software sharpening. Another thing I noticed is the 6 Pro handles the sun better than the 13 Pro Max. In this shot the sunlight was directly pointed towards my face it doesn't look great on both but the iPhone was much worse. So overall the 13 Pro Max will give you a more natural blur effect, better subject isolation and the higher quality zoomed portraits while the 6 Pro is better in handling skin tones, colors and sunlight. Now let's take a look at your votes for the best portrait shot and here's the image of a choice. I received a total of 153 comments, only 128 were valid. The 13 Pro Max got 90 votes versus 38 for the 6 Pro. That's mainly because the 6 Pro image came out too warm with a green tint which a lot of people didn't like plus the blur effect doesn't look natural. The 13 Pro Max was mainly picked for the better blur effect and more realistic look. However I have a surprise for you. I took another shot in the same place but in a different spot and this time what happened is exactly the opposite. The 6 Pro produced the cooler image with a more natural look and the skin tone so I believe if this one was used in the blind comparison, most of you would have chosen the 6 Pro instead. But it seems like the 6 Pro was struggling to nail the white balance and the colors in the previous condition which gives the edge to the 13 Pro Max. Now let's compare the night portraits. The same differences we saw in the morning shots apply here. Still my face looks soft and blurry in the 13 Pro Max's image and the 6 Pro has too much blur and worse subject isolation as usual. Beside the subject, the background looks better in the 13 Pro Max's image, it has more realistic colors and white balance with higher exposure so it looks more presentable. Moving to the zoomed portraits, the 13 Pro Max's image came out too soft and blurry and for some reason the blur effect was higher than the pixel which is unexpected so the 6 Pro did better in this situation. And if you are curious, here is how the 6 Pro portrait looks like with the face retouching set to subtle. And here is the smooth version. Now it's time to check your votes on the night portrait shot. This is the photo of a choice. I received a total of 163 comments, 147 out of which were valid votes. The 13 Pro Max got 125 votes versus 22 for the 6 Pro. The 13 Pro Max was picked mainly for the natural bokeh and the better subject isolation. And the 6 Pro was picked only for the better skin tone. I do agree with the results as the fake blur effect of the 6 Pro ruins the whole image. However, if you own a Pixel 6 or 6 Pro, try to decrease the effect later in Google Photos to get better results. Next, the selfie and selfie portraits comparison. Starting with the field of view in this shot, both were set to the lowest zoom level and as you see the 6 Pro has a noticeably wider field of view. So let's take a look at the differences in the image processing. As expected the iPhone uses its hidden beauty mode to smooth out the skin and adjust the tone resulting in an unrealistic look while the 6 Pro as always produces the more natural skin tone. For the HDR the 6 Pro did better in my opinion keeping the shadows and the highlights well balanced while the 13 Pro Max blown out the highlights and didn't handle the sun as good as the 6 Pro. 
When it comes to colors, the 13 Pro Max has more saturated colors, while the 6 Pro presented the scene and the t-shirt color more accurately. Finally, the details. In this area, the 13 Pro Max did better due to the higher resolution of 12 megapixel versus 11.1 .1 on the 6 Pro. This image summarizes all the differences between the two cameras in pretty much all scenarios. So let me show you a quick slideshow for more selfies before jumping to the night ones. Now let's take a look at the night selfies. This image was taken with the night mode activated on both. Beside the skin tone, the 6 Pro image white balance is more than what it should be, while the 13 Pro Max represents the scene more accurately. But its image has a lot more noise and less details compared to the 6 Pro, even though it has a higher megapixel count. Turning off the night mode made things worse for both. The 6 Pro started to show a noticeable amount of noise like the 13 Pro Max with the same cooler white balance as the previous image and the level of detail is still better on the 6 Pro side. So overall, the iPhone has better colors reproduction at night, while the Pixel produces higher quality photos. Now, the selfie portraits. Starting with the morning shots, the same differences I mentioned in the normal selfies apply here. So let's talk about the subject isolation and the blur effect. I don't see any noticeable difference in the blur effect, both look very similar, but when it comes to subject isolation, the iPhone looks slightly better in handling the edges around my hair. But the 6 Pro has the edge for being able to take ultra-wide selfie portraits, which is something you cannot do on the 13 Pro Max. Switching to the night selfie portraits, and here the 6 Pro has the edge over the iPhone for being able to use night sight. So in a dark situation like this, the Pixel will offer much better results. The only thing the iPhone offers in this situation is to use the display as a flashlight, but the results are still worse than the 6 Pro. Now let's talk about your votes for the morning and night selfies. I chose portrait images for both comparisons as far as they look exactly the same as the normal selfies. Starting with the morning, here is the photo of a choice. I received 251 comments at the time of collecting the results, 221 were valid votes, and the 6 Pro got 173 votes versus 48 for the 13 Pro Max. People mainly chose the 6 Pro for the better HDR and natural skin tone, while the 13 Pro Max was picked for the nicer looking image. For the night selfie comparison, here is the photo of a choice. I received 148 comments, 143 out of which were valid, the 6 Pro got 102 versus 41 for the 13 Pro Max. Once more, the 6 Pro was picked for the more natural skin tone and the 13 Pro Max for the nicer looking image. While the 13 Pro Max did win your votes for the day and night back camera portraits, but it lost the front camera battle, and that proves how the artificial looking bouquet effect of the 6 Pro using the back camera is holding it back, as the front camera is much better in this matter. Next, the zoom and moonshots comparison. We all know the 6 Pro has the edge here, but I just wanted to show you the difference. This is a 15x zoomed image on both, as this is the maximum you can get on the iPhone. As you see, it's a day and night difference, and the wind definitely goes to the pixel. But what about the lower zoom levels? At 2x, which is a digital crop from the main camera on both, the edge still goes to the pixel due to its higher megapixel count. Once we reach 3x up to 3.9x, the iPhone takes the lead as the telephoto is not yet triggered on the 6 Pro. But starting from 4X onwards, the 13 Pro Max is way behind the pixel, and these are some of the examples I took at the maximum zoom level both cameras can reach. The same thing applies to the night zoom photos. And here's a quick example at 15X on both, and here's the 20X version of the 6 Pro. But what's more fun to do is to take a moonshot using this powerful zoom. Here's a screen recording while trying to capture the moon using the native camera app, the 13 Pro Max shows the moon as a white circle without any details. Even when I tried to decrease the exposure as much as I could, this didn't help. While the 6 Pro dual exposure sliders were very useful, and in a matter of seconds the moon was clearly visible in the viewfinder, and the results were astonishing. So look at the difference between the two. I expected better results from the 13 Pro Max as the 15x zoom is a reasonable amount for taking a good moon shot, but unfortunately it couldn't. So hands down, the win goes to the 6 Pro in the zoom category. Next, the macros. While the 6 Pro did win the zoom comparison, but the 13 Pro Max can get much closer to the subject using its new dedicated macro mode. You can get as close as 2 cm away from the subject, and I found it to be really fun to use. The 6 Pro does have a 4x telephoto lens, but it's almost impossible to stop the phone from switching to the main sensor once it goes out of focus. 
plus you won't be able to get as close as the 13 Pro Max can do. Don't get me wrong, the 6 Pro can still capture some really nice close-ups, but not as good as the iPhone. So here's the first shot, you can clearly see how better the image coming out of the 13 Pro Max. And here's another example at night. So the wind definitely goes to the iPhone, but let me show you a quick slideshow for some day and night macros before jumping to the next category. Now it's time for motion photos. This is a new feature Google introduced with the Pixel 6 series. It includes two different types of photos, long exposure and action pan. The long exposure is available on the 13 Pro Max by taking a live photo and they change the effect to live exposure. So let's see which one is better. First, the iPhone creates the long exposure image from the live photo video, which is recorded in low quality, while the 6 Pro creates the image on the fly directly from the camera app. And that's why the 13 Pro Max's image is always blurry, dark, and has much lower quality. Here's another shot. This is how it looks before the effect, and this is how it looks after. I'm sure you would go for the 6 Pro image for the much higher quality, plus the iPhone crops in to create the long exposure image, which is not the case with the Pixel. But when it comes to night long exposure photos, I took one of myself to see if I could get something cool out of it. And look at the difference. The 13 Pro Max's image is simply unusable, it's too dark and blurry while the 6 Pro did much better. A shot like this would look so cool if taken in the subway. Here are more day and night long exposure shots I took for this comparison. The 6 Pro kept impressing me with every photo. All of them look great, especially at night. But you might encounter some failed attempts if you didn't choose the correct subject like in this example. Now let's talk about Action Pan, which is only available on the 6 Pro. It simply blurs the background and keeps the moving subject in focus, I tried this feature in an amazing place called Exit 55. It's an attraction point for people who own supercars, drones and RC planes and want to take them for a spin. So let me show you what I've got. Here is a stunning shot for the Campagna T-Rex. In my opinion this is a commercial grade photo and here is a similar one for the Camaro. These are a couple of shots for a RC helicopter, another one for my supercar the 2016 Ford Focus and some night photos for the Camaro. Still the quality is so good for a night photo. So you can use this feature to take amazing shots and it's a welcomed addition to the Pixel 6 series. Another new feature in the Pixel 6 series is the face unblur. When you take a photo of a moving subject, it automatically tries to unblur the face and I found it to work well in most cases. Here's the first trial. And this is how fast I moved while taking the shot, so let's take a look at the results. Look at how blurry I look in the 13 Pro Max's image, while the 6 Pro is miles ahead. This feature will make your life much easier when you try to take photos of your kids. I tried it at night and the results are acceptable. My face doesn't look perfect, it's a bit soft and blurry, but it's still better than the 13 Pro Max. And the last category in the photo comparison is the astrophotography. I went to Alcodra Lakes which is an amazing spot for this matter, and here's the first image. The 6 Pro took 4 minutes versus 30 seconds for the 13 Pro Max, as expected, the difference in quality goes to the 6 Pro hands down. But this time, I tried to take the same shot again on the 6 Pro, but instead of waiting the whole 4 minutes, I stopped the capturing after 30 seconds, to see if the Pixel can offer the same results as the iPhone. Surprisingly, the 6 Pro shot is still better than the 13 Pro Max with the same 30 seconds exposure. But the 4 minutes will give you one more advantage beside the quality, which is the astrophotography time lapse. This one second video looks so cool as shown here in these examples. And finally, these are some of the landscape shots taken under the same conditions for you to decide which one looks better. So that was the photo comparison and we have seen all the weaknesses and the strengths of each camera and now it's time for videos. Starting with the video quality, I chose the sunset for this test because it's a very challenging situation for any camera. Right off the bat, the 6 Pro showed a noticeable amount of noise in the shadows, while the 13 Pro Max did handle this very well. Not only this, but it also kept the natural look of the sun and its amazing golden color. While the 6 Pro brightened up the shadows and the highlights, so the scene lost this very important detail. Also, the white balance of the 6 Pro was cooler than what it should be in some parts of the video. Moving to the ultra wide, I set both to 4K 30, which is the maximum the 6 Pro can do. 
The sex pro still struggles from the same noise in the shadows, but the sky and the sun look slightly better compared to the wide angle lens, as I can see more realistic colors and different color gradients in the sky. But it's still not as good as the 13 Pro Max. Other than this, everything is exactly the same. Next, the telephoto lens. And that's when I started to like the 6 Pro. First, the noise in the shadows was much less and acceptable. It has much better HDR and more natural colors compared to the other two lenses. And the results are even better than the 13 Pro Max. It seems like the higher the focal length, the better the video quality on the 6 Pro. And the f3.5 of the telephoto lens seems to work well with Google's algorithm. The same problems the 6 Pro suffered from in the morning comparison are just more at night. Look at how much noise in the Pixel's video, while the 13 Pro Max's looks so clean with perfect colors. And here's a sample of the ultra-wide lens. And another sample from the telephoto. Finally, the front facing camera once more are set to 4K30. The first difference I see is in the exposure. The subject looks brighter in the 6 Pro video, which I like, but this is just a personal preference. Also, the HDR of the 13 Pro Max is better as the sky looks more detailed and well exposed. The front camera video at night is bad on both, but the 6 Pro is much worse. With a tremendous amount of noise, not sure why Google is not able to properly adjust the ISO to avoid this problem. So overall, the win goes to the 13 Pro Max in every aspect. As it delivers a cleaner image, it was able to represent the actual scene much better. It can record 4K60 with all lenses, and finally, the ultra-wide has a wider field of view. Next, the audio quality. And I will start with the back camera. Here is a quick audio comparison between the 6 Pro and the 13 Pro Max outdoors in a quiet environment. So you can tell which one sounds better. Nothing special is activated. I'm using the native camera apps on both devices. So I will keep switching the audio between both to be able to tell the difference between them. And now let's move on to the second test. Here's another comparison between the 13 Pro Max and the 6 Pro. But this time I'm in a more noisy environment compared to the previous video. This time the highway is right in front of me and you can definitely hear the cars passing by. Overall my voice was louder in the 6 Pro video but the 13 Pro Max has better noise reduction. So let's try the front facing camera. So here's a front facing camera video comparison. I'm holding both devices handheld. Both are set to 4K 30 frames per second and the speech enhancement on the 6 Pro is not activated yet. I'm just using the normal mic on both. The sun is directly on my left side, so let me turn to test the HDR. Here is how the HDR looks on both. I think it's a, a little bit better on the, 12 Pro, the 13 Pro Max so far. Here is another mic comparison between the 6 Pro and the 13 Pro Max. But this time I'm in a very noisy environment and you can see the constructions behind me. I also activated the speech enhancement feature on the 6 Pro. We don't have a similar feature on the 13 Pro Max and keep in mind this feature is only available using the front facing camera on the 6 Pro. So I couldn't activate it using the back camera. But I will keep switching the audio between both cameras to give you an idea which one sounds better. Without the speech enhancement the 13 Pro Max was louder. After activating the speech enhancement, the 6 Pro clipped all the noise and my voice was a lot clearer, but the only downside, it sounded a bit tinny. So please let me know in the comments which one you like more. Next, the video stabilization. I did the test in a basement to easily spot the differences between the two. Starting with the wide angle, from what I see, the 13 Pro Max's stabilization is smoother and more natural while the 6 Pro is too aggressive resulting in a more shaky video. I also tested the active stabilization mode on the 6 Pro and this made things even worse. First, the video quality is much lower as it can only record 1080p in this mode, plus the stabilization was too aggressive so you can see the impact of my footsteps more. When it comes to the ultra wide, the 6 Pro video is a lot steadier, but once more it doesn't look as smooth as the 13 Pro Max due to the aggressive stabilization. Also, the wider field of view makes it easier for the iPhone to stabilize the video. For the telephoto, I only compared both outdoors. For the third time, the 6 Pro still lags behind, and that's expected as the more zoomed lens of the 6 Pro is more sensitive to movements, and I can see a noticeable yellow effect in the footage that doesn't exist in the 13 Pro Max's video. 
Finally, for the front-facing camera, the difference is very minor, but the edge still goes to the iPhone for producing a smoother video, and of course, the night videos share the same issues, and things got even worse. So overall, in this category, the win goes to the 13 Pro Max, hands down. And I don't see a flagship experience coming out of the 6 Pro in this category. So that was my day and night camera comparison for the 6 Pro and the 13 Pro Max. It took me so long to finish this video, but I learned a lot about each camera, and I hope by this you can clearly choose which camera is better for you. Thank you for watching, and see you the next video.